Welcome to DevSecOps, Kubernetes, and AI ML in Space. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Bren Briggs with Hypergiant, and joining me today is Chris Nuber from Rancher Federal. Next slide. There we go. Controls worked, <laughs> worked in testing. Uh, so I run the DevOps and security disciplines and teams here at Hypergiant. Uh, for us, this means leveraging my background as an Air Force uh, 3D1 X2 in designing and building repeatable secure deployments of Kubernetes and other infrastructure that support our AI and ML applications and customers. Currently live just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and when I'm not hacking away on AWS or Raspberry Pis, you can find my family and me collecting exotic animals like snakes and tarantulas. Uh, we're up to 14 species now, uh, scorpions, centipedes, chameleons, and other things like that. I'll hand over to you, Chris, uh, and you can tell the folks a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. <clears throat> so a bit about myself. I'm the co-founder and senior solutions architect at Rancher Federal. I uh, came from Rancher Labs proper in a consulting engineer role, uh, currently residing in Winter Park, Florida with my wife and two daughters, and I try to get outdoors with them as much as possible in my free time. Currently, I'm working on a contract as a Kubernetes SME for DoD Platform 1. I'm assisting with Kubernetes Edge solutions and integrating their software pipeline with the Edge One and Satellite One missions. So before we get into the details, uh, it'll be helpful to speak about the different teams and the organizations involved and how they're all tied together. I'll pass it over to Brent a bit just to talk about uh, Hypergiant and their Cyber Award and how it's related to Satellite One and Edge One. Thanks, Chris. So, uh... Hypergiant, who are we? Uh, in my opinion, we're like the coolest company I've ever worked for. Uh, we do AI and ML solutions for customers in a number of industries, uh, critical infrastructure, space, defense, uh, retail, you name it. Um, but customers come to us with data and data problems and we apply AI and machine learning to solve these problems uh, and provide them custom solutions that they can then support and operate uh, and then we can continue to support them in that process uh, should they choose. For Satellite One, uh, we have we were awarded a Phase Three Cyber uh, to modernize satellites on orbit and leverage AI and ML on edge. So literally, this means putting satellites in space and doing AI on basically a potato of a satellite. That's that's the challenge that uh, we have been awarded a Phase Three Cyber to solve. So Chris, back to you. All right, so who is Rancher Federal? Uh, Rancher Federal provides support and consulting services uh, for the US government. In addition to that, uh, we provide secure distributions of Kubernetes and other open source software. Uh, we provide um, you know, secured hardened containers of Kubernetes, uh, Rancher, uh, and other cloud native technologies. Uh, in addition, we provide support for service mesh, uh, other edge computing technologies, um, you know, pipelines and delivery as well. So currently we have several consultants working at Platform One uh, on a DevSecOps contract uh, with the Air Force. And it's to provide expertise around Kubernetes, container hardening, other cloud native technologies. Uh, so just kind of uh, being there in different groups and different teams, uh, I'm currently embedded in the Satellite One and Edge One team, as well as the Big Bang team. So Platform One, uh, you'll hear it come up a lot today. Uh, so it's an official uh, DoD DevSecOps Enterprise Services uh, platform. Uh, so what, what they do is, is manage uh, software factories for development teams so they can focus on building mission critical applications. Okay, so with some of that background info out of the way, uh, today we're going to talk about the Edge One and Satellite One projects that Brent and I are working on uh, with Hypergiant at DoD Platform One. So Hypergiant and Rancher Federal, we're working together uh, at the OD Platform One uh, to demonstrate the benefits of DevSecOps, Kubernetes, uh, AI ML apps in remote and often disconnected environments, including uh, the satellite launch uh, targeting first quarter of 2021, uh, which is, uh, I guess, the kind of the topic of this talk. 
So today we're gonna to outline the current challenges and problems with satellite and remote practical edge technologies and how we're working to address these issues by working with SAT1 and Edge1. So I'll start with platform one uh, and just give like a really quick um, overview of their pipeline uh, because this is, you know, pipeline is, is a really critical piece of getting any kind of software development done. So um, here's a simple outline of what's happening here. Basically a customer defines the requirements. Uh, they meet a certain amount of um, requirements that are set by platform one as well to make sure they're ready to be onboarded into the system. That includes things like basic hardening of their apps and making sure that they're easily containerized or are containerized um, and another of other um, requirements that, that are placed on them. So once that's ready and they're onboarded, um, they're able to ingest this software, um, software factory uh, and pipeline. Uh, so basically they can um, use the Big Bang, uh, IAC and, and CAC, which is you know, infrastructure as code, configuration and code as code package to create a software factory with all the tools required to build and deploy applications. Um, beyond that, you know, basically uh, you can do, uh, it'll deploy a test environment. So uh, it can be either virtual or a hardware in the loop, which is the case with the edge, um, you know, having, having some hardware in the loop to actually do testing uh, that kind of mimics production. And then it can be deployed to GovCloud, classified environments, um, ABMS edge devices, or bare metal endpoints. So essentially it provides like a consistent, repeatable, and secure way to deliver software. So what's the purpose of all these organizations coming together? Uh, I was able to get a quote from Major Rob Slaughter, uh, the director at Platform One, and it really emphasizes the importance of these missions. And what he had to say was, the most important DOD workloads are all edge systems. Satellites, jets, missiles, et cetera. These systems can't fail, and therefore we cannot fail to provide an enterprise solution. So as you can imagine, the work being done here is a race to modernize the edge, and it's critical on a number of levels. So uh, now I'll jump into the current satellite problems uh, that, are, that the industry is facing. So one, space rated hardware is expensive. Software development and delivery processes are slow. On-orbit satellite software updates are often not possible or, or very slow as well. And it leads to more launches for similar missions. And the AI ML capabilities are far behind the current capabilities on the ground due to that slow update cycle. And one major uh, issue and, and problem that we need to solve for is satellite connectivity and bandwidth is generally poor. So it makes downloading large images and other data very difficult. So what is the objective of the Satellite One mission? To demonstrate DevSecOps in space by leveraging that uh, platform, CI, platform One CICD pipeline that we talked about earlier. Uh, and Kubernetes provisioning and deployment. So um, also to evaluate the use of lower cost, lower cost hardware on satellite payloads, demonstrate the rapid delivery of software updates in orbit, and demonstrate the use of AIML and computer vision software in orbit. So when is this all happening and what's currently going on? Uh, so the minimum viable product is nearing completion. The finalized product is expected to be completed sometime in November of 2020. The launch of the payload is planned for the first quarter of 2021. But again, with all launches, the actual launch date may change. Um, you know, things, things happen, things get delayed, uh, but we are targeting the first quarter of 2021. All right, so now on to some fun stuff, um, you know, the more of the techie stuff. Uh, here's a design overview of the FlatSat, as, as we like to call it. Myself and several team members at Hypergiant have a setup like this at home. It consists of two Raspberry 4 uh, Pis uh, server nodes, 
and they're independent of each other with one being a warm backup. Two RPi4 uh, worker nodes, each with a Pi camera. Another RPi4 with an accelerometer and light sensor. And a Jetson Nano, which is able to read sensor and GPS board information. Um, and then it, you know, obviously will run applications that can do things with that data. So these are air gap devices it's connected to each other through a local network via an ethernet switch. The two masters have an additional ethernet adapter that is attached to another switch and has connectivity to the Cygnus device and external network needed to communicate with the ground. And I know there's a lot to process in, in these diagrams, but the, the slides will be available uh, as well with the talk. All right, so now I'll go over some of the Kubernetes details, as that's re really where my role comes into play. The Hypergiant team chose K3S as the Kubernetes distribution for this project due to the small footprint, simple air gap capability, and its ability to run on multiple architectures. As I mentioned previously, there are two independent K3S server nodes. The reason for this is that should one server device fail in orbit, we can quickly communicate with the server node, automatically fail over, or run some scripts to rebuild the cluster with this new server node and be back up and going. Since the clusters are in air gap, all the images for K3S as well as the app workloads are stored locally on each node. We opted for this rather than running a registry due to less overhead and, and having one less point of failure. The photographers, there are two photographer nodes. One has a standard Pi camera and the other has a Pi Noir camera. These will take photos which will be processed and transmitted. There are also two sensor nodes to detect and gather information around lighting and other things. Tying this all together is an application developed by Hypergiant, the coordinator. This is an application that will take command arguments and send them to the cluster in orbit. Tasks will include administrative type tasks as well as sending small bits of code with which applications can then ingest for updates, patches, etc. The coordinator will run both in and out of the cluster so that in the event that there's an issue with the cluster, commands can still be issued. The small bits of code updates might be ingested as a config map, for example. Uh, another thing that could be used for is that, you know, issue a command to the coordinator to uh, restart the pod and load in that new config map. So here's a diagram network as another example uh, as to how the layout of the cluster and devices and how they're interconnected. I know these diagrams are probably on the small side, but we'll have the slides uh, ready to provide later again uh, to take a closer look. I'll send it back over to Bren to talk a bit about the applications that Hypergiant have been working on to make all this cool stuff happen. So what is SAT1 doing? Uh, well, we're doing the super very important, very critical mission of taking a picture of Baby Yoda. Uh, so the primary purpose of Satellite One is to demonstrate the ability to do computer vision, AI, and machine learning workloads on edge. Uh, we actually mentioned specifically the, the Jetson Nano module, which is uh, developed by NVIDIA. It's a $99 IoT AI uh, processor that we have that we've mounted onto this satellite and that we're going to be using to test this. <clears throat> So this is particularly important given the bandwidth constraints that are experienced in space. When you're dealing with a link that measures in kilobits per second and is only available for a few minutes at a time during your flyover window, you have to be very efficient with what you transfer. In this case, we want to transfer the minimum amount of information. We only want to transfer decisions uh, or in some certain cases for the coordinator commands. And so we want to be able to send the analysis instead of the raw images. Ultimately, a human can still make decisions as to which photos, specifically the higher resolution photos to downlink. But the focus here is to be able to process decisions on edge and send the analysis and results instead of sending the entire raw data set. What we're also doing is conducting a temperature experiment to observe how the Jetson behaves in vacuum under a heavy computational load. The idea here is that we're taking a baseline reading, then we will run a workload and find a peak temperature, then we'll stop the workload and watch the device return to baseline. But why? Why would we put a whole satellite in space to take a few pictures of Baby Yoda and measure some temperatures? Well, replacing everything and modernizing a whole fleet in one fell swoop is a massive change that few would even consider, let alone accept. And for good reason. 
it's risky and it's expensive. And we've opted, so we've opted to use a different approach known as a strangler pattern to phase out legacy systems and replace them with modernized stacks that can be more easily updated and themselves replaced in the future. To even do this much, we need to build confidence in the systems. We need to demonstrate the ability to update mission critical applications and components, recover from failure, roll back, roll forward, and, and et cetera. And we need to be able to prove reliability and survivability in space and on the ground. And this is the key to making Kubernetes on edge successful. Just like Chris mentioned with our previous design, we have redundancy in this entire system. We have out of band controllers. We have ways of making sure that this is survivable. Now we need to deploy this into a real environment and test it, which brings me to my next slide. So what is Edge One? Well, like SAT One, this is part of ABMS and looking to solve the problem of deploying, updating, and ensuring consistent configuration and deployments. Unlike SAT One, we're not on orbit and taking pictures of Baby Yoda. We are in aircraft, we're in forward locations, and we're in vehicles. That said, we're facing many of the same challenges. Limited bandwidth, partition networks, resource constrained devices, and harsh conditions. Where Edge One really differs from SAT One is the basic mission though. SAT One is much more true to the concept of Edge that many of us here are familiar with. However, that definition seems to be shifting and expanding to include larger devices doing more traditional compute workloads, such as enterprise servers out in remote locations, which is exactly what Edge One is, or exactly what Edge One also does. It's not strictly limited to these large edge devices. Um, so <clears throat> moving on, uh, Edge One in many ways is functioning as a local cloud without the benefit of power redundancy I'm oh, sorry, Chris is catching up here. Uh, yeah, so we have low bandwidth and, and poor network connections. We're resource constrained. Uh, you know, we have these really harsh conditions. And so this, these, these provide a very difficult op, uh, environment to operate in. And so we're functioning as a local cloud, but without the benefit of power redundancy, extra hardware, or multiple highly reliable trunks outbound. So our solution here is to use GitOps and declarative configuration to try to solve this problem. With this, what we can do is, is leverage a platform one project called Big Bang. And using Big Bang, we're able to jumpstart the development process because many of the engineering decisions and product selections were already made. Chris mentioned that he was embedded in the Big Bang uh, team as well as two of the other projects within uh, platform one. So Chris, Myself, other team members were contributing to Big Bang, and as a group, as a whole, we're making decisions for Platform One as to what's certified, uh, what sort of configuration patterns we can be using. So we have these, a lot of these decisions already made for Platform One, and then we go and apply them to very specific cases like Satellite One or like Edge One. So using this process, uh, um, we're making decisions you know, on a large scale for many of these smaller, more particular applications. On top of that, we opted to use K3S for our much smaller edge nodes. So think about Raspberry Pi or similar devices, like Chris said, because of its, uh, because of its small footprint, because of its simplicity to deploy, and because of its ability to deploy on multiple architectures. We have to be able to use ARM. Using uh, anything, use, not being able to use ARM is really a non-starter for us. For configuration management, we went back to the Big Bang Bootstrap approach. Operators should really worry about operating and deploying applications and not messing with their container scheduler's arcane settings. Using GitOps patterns with Argo CD allows us to deploy completely configured and hardened baseline in minutes, ready to run applications. With this Big Bang pattern, we can also pre-configure deployment pipelines to fit specific mission profiles, further accelerating deployments when a team reaches the field. A box could be mostly pre-configured and ready for action before even reaching the AOR and would only need to be plugged into a network and turned on to start serving applications. This stack can be managed locally or remotely by parties in the rear, AFSENT, CONUS, headquarters, some other location, or even co-managed by operators on the field and these people in the rear. Imagine a situation where a new application version needs to be deployed or a network policy needs to be updated. Anyone, any admin with access to the Git repo hosting the configuration source can submit the patch, have it tested, have it validated, and pushed to the relevant clusters quickly from anywhere. This GitOps GitFlow pipeline 
means that management can be co a collaborative experience in multiple locations and in, distributed, uh, in a distributed way. And looking at this quote here, when distributing an application from the cloud to the edge, ABMS needs to optimize where processing happens, focusing on throughput with minimal latency, all the while supporting DOD's DevSecOps initiatives. Edge One is foundational to this capability. Just like we mentioned with Satellite One, Edge One is facing some of the same problems and has to solve them in its own way for where it operates, which means processing on the edge as close to the action as possible. We have to make use of our limited constrained resources and bandwidth. So why am I so passionate about this? Well, this used to be my job. Packing and stacking boxes, deploying them in the field, plugging up switches, watching everyone struggle with the, even some of the most basic administration tasks, not because they're bad at their job, but because our processes constrained us. We did not have the right tools. We, uh, at the time, uh, this is not even that long ago. This was, uh, you know, 2011 to 2014 was kind of my peak here. Uh, we were terrified of configuration as code. We were terrified of infrastructure as code. We were, we were terrified of a lot of these things as, as an Air Force. We, DevOps was a dirty word. You know, you didn't say that. You, you used the very traditional, we're gonna do it by hand. We're gonna put a cut sheet in an airman's hand. And we're gonna sit that airman down in front of a console and this airman is gonna type every command and they're gonna configure everything the same way every time. And they're gonna memorize these configurations by the rope. And if that sounds terrible, it is. If that sounds mistake prone, it is. Ask me how many times I completely ruined a network because of VTP misconfigurations and I wiped out everybody's VLANs. It happens happens a lot. And so uh, we're trying to bring, we're trying to remove and alleviate the pains of this pre DevOps environment and bring combat communications into the next generation and mo really modernize this stack here. So uh, if you can imagine, you know, if, if you were a system administrator or a network administrator in the, the pre DevOps era, you probably relied very extensively on golden images. You had an image that you built and that you baked, and that was the baseline for every virtual machine that you deployed. And you probably ran just a stig to make the ran it through the stig to make sure that it worked. Uh, config management was nearly non-existent. Uh, maybe you had some Perl or some Bash or some Python to do some initial configuration. But then after that, if you had to make large scale changes, most of the time you logged into every box and did that change. A new app is a new VM every time. Deployment, failover, and clustering. Uh, if it's not built into the app, uh, you have some problems. You have to use HA proxy. You have to use some some clever load balancing. You have to uh, you have to have you know some warm standbys or things like that. And your a lot of times your applications are not built to be failed over or clustered. Now we did rely very heavily on VMware. So if, uh, if a hypervisor went down, we were able to recover from that really well. If an application went down, it was, it was a different story. And then auditing. Auditing was a struggle for us. So we did run vulnerability scanners, but uh, we were not able to, uh, to monitor and, and audit our configuration before it landed on these machines because there was no configuration as code. We didn't have any real inventory of what we decided to do on these servers. And so it was mostly us trying to make sure we didn't drift from the baseline or having this tribal knowledge of what we did. So again, we had all the same you know, process problems and pain points as pre DevOps, which we're trying to alleviate now. So one example, of a use case for deployment for Edge One comes in the form of an improved system of managing air missions using a new application called Widow. In this use case, teams from multiple squadrons can easily collaborate on planning a mission, share information, and get live updates. It's deployed in Edge One. It can be accessed from Device One or Box One, which uh, if you're keeping score, everything is has a one after it, right? Uh, device one and box one are a, 
additional ABMS uh, ecosystem applications, but these are specifically for endpoints. So device one and box one would be laptops, tablets, phones, uh, things like that that are meant to access business applications running within the ABMS ecosystem. Now, the great thing about this is that because it is running uh, platform one in Kubernetes, it can be auto scaled, updated, deployed to new applications using the platform one software development lifecycle. Uh, so this application can be hosted or accessed virtually anywhere thanks to Edge One. So why not run it on the back of a C17 or KC46? Well, that's exactly what we intend to try. Edge One's purpose is not only to be a local cloud, but to provide a hub, <clears throat> but to provide a hub for secure processing and serving of applications to connect into other ABMS projects wherever they run mission planning, activities, situational awareness, or anything that needs to be pushed into the hands of people on the ground can be handled through Edge One. Uh, as we talked about, uh, Edge One is designed to interoperate with other ABMS infrastructure projects. So we talked about Mesh One being a software-defined mesh network. So we not only would have an Edge One uh, box and then other um, devices such as uh, Box One, or device one, we would have a mesh network that would connect us to other edge one boxes or back to cloud one and SD-WAN that serves this backhaul so that we don't need to be worrying about what our backup or our backhaul is, that we don't need to be worrying exactly how to go find this thing because mesh one is going to be handling these routing and switching decisions for us and as a software defined network. And so that's the time that we have thanks to Hypergiant, Platform One, Rancher Federal, and Compute at the Edge for allowing us to give this talk, and most especially to all of you for attending. Have a great day. Yeah, again, uh, echoing what Bren said, um, yeah, it, was, it was great that you all joined the talk today. Uh, and stick around and we will have a Q&A after this talk airs. Um, hopefully we can answer some more questions. I know there was a lot to process uh, and there was a lot we had to cut out just because of time constraints. I mean, we could go on for a while. Uh, so again, stick around and thank you.